assalamu alaikum hi everyone greetings my name is burair ali hussain and this is the sixth episode of brainstorming with burair brainstorming with burair as you know is a platform where i invite people from all around the world and uh, uh, my uh, the purpose behind this is to learn from them uh, from them and uh, so we can learn from them and we can apply those techniques and we can be successful as they are my today's guest uh, has a vast and um, a deep uh, experience of uh, um, in the field of business in the field of management consultant and um, he has advised more than 500 businesses and uh, i can say that that he has risen up more than 500 business businesses up to the level of going concern so um, you may be thinking that uh, that this my channel uh, is different and uh, i talk about uh, usually i talk about law of attraction mind sciences and um, nlp fourth dimension silva and these kind of things and what and a businessman what is the relationship with that uh, so let me tell you that there is a deep connection with a mindset having a mindset and having a business because when you start a business when you uh, plan to have a business when you plan to do something in your life you should have a clear mindset and without having a mindset you cannot succeed so without any further ado uh, uh, i invite uh, mr morco robert I'm excited to be here uh, we- Hi hi Marco how are you good my friend really good uh, okay so um how was uh, your day today today's been a busy day man it's on it's for me it's only 9 a.m. and already i had a call with uh, uh, a marketing partner in uh, Romania uh, i had a call with a uh, and a business partner of mine in France so just, and now I'm with you guys in Pakistan so I guess that's the life of an international business consultant right that's what I do I try if I'm not on the plane traveling to see people I'm on the I'm on on zoom or on streamyard to actually connect with people from all over the world so so that's a blessing blessing in this guys uh, because pandemic has changed so many things so uh, what about the last year how uh, had you spent your last year because pandemic was very severe and uh, people have to change their mindset change their lives so how was your la- uh, last year 2020 you know i think we, here's here's what i'm going to say about 2020 this is when we saw people who actually you know we saw the people who were ready and the people who were not ready warren buffett you know the famous investor business Mr. genius you know uh, they call him the oracle of omaha omaha right um, because he lives in omaha nebraska and they call him the oracle because he's such a genius and he said something one day he said when the tide recedes we see who is actually who was actually bathing naked right so if you can go in the ocean and not wear a bathing suit but when the tide recedes we see who is actually not wearing a bathing suit and i think 2020 that's what we saw we saw 2020 we saw entrepreneurs who were ready to face tough circumstances and we saw entrepreneurs yes. who were not ready now a lot of my clients a lot of uh, the people who became my clients in 2020 were simply not ready and then we had to we had to turn around very very quickly and then they, they needed to to get ready and the first thing that needed to happen is mindset I call it uh, emotional mastery. When you're faced with a, a difficult situation, you need you need to develop emotional mastery. You need to be able to confront the situation out there without allowing the the situation out there to start affecting you emotionally. See, it's one thing and I always tell my clients, I said it, you need to be able to see yourself in the worst possible future. You need to be able to go there. You know, what if everything goes wrong? what's going to happen to my future you need to be able to but you don't want to live there right you don't want to live there in your head you don't want to be in that oh my god no you want to be in a place of strength where you are emotionally strong but you need to be able to 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 visualize what's going to happen in the future with honesty so that's what we did right 
that's what we did this year. And um, the people who were able to shift, they're thriving right now. Honestly, 2020, it's um, to me, it's one of the best years ever. No, number one, my son was born. So in 2020, my, my new son was born. So that's a very exciting time for me. Number two, I got to spend a lot of time at home with my son. But number three, what we see from a business perspective is we see the ranking being reorganized. Somebody who might have been in for 15 years, they were in the pole position. They were number one in the business, right? Right now, maybe they're not in business anymore. And the person who was number three now is number one. Or the person who was number six teamed up with the person who was number 15 and together now they're number two, right? And this is going to continue. This is going to continue. Um, it's a, it's, it's a, this is the best time for me because this is, this is what I do. I help people see the world. I help people develop themselves. I don't know if you've heard me talk about this before, but I have this concept called the outlier entrepreneur. And the outlier entrepreneur is the kind of person who can actually make a business successful. If you, if you try to run a business and you're just like a, any other normal, average, ordinary person out there, especially in hard times like right now, it's almost going to be impossible. So the fact that somebody owns a business is not enough for somebody to become successful. So being a business owner is not going to make you successful. You want to become successful, you need to develop a certain profile. And a lot of yeah. people don't understand that. It, it's, it freaks me out how so many people don't understand that. And I'm going to be very honest with your audience. I'm going to tell you one thing. If you've been in business, if you've been in business for at least a year, at least one year, so you've been in business for a year, two years, three years, four years, five years, 10 years, and you don't make at least the equivalent of $100,000 American. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to make 100000 or you know, that would be uh, about 1.5 million. No, it's more than that. That would be 15, 15 million rupees. You don't need to be making 15 million rupees. But what I'm saying is that what $100,000 buys you in America, how much is that? I don't know. Maybe it's uh, 1 million rupees. Maybe it's 20 million. I don't know exactly how many, how it is. But if you don't already make that in your business, the problem is not the business. You are the problem. You understand? If you don't make, like, the base, you know, $100,000 a year is just like, you know, it's the first step. You can live with your business. You know, you can actually live. I make $100,000. I'm not rich. I'm not poor. But I'm able to live a decent life. Whatever that line is in Pakistan. Okay, Maybe it's $1 million, Maybe it's $2 million, Maybe it's... 600,000, I don't know exactly how much it is, okay? But if you haven't reached that line where you can live comfortably with your business, you're the problem. You're the problem. So before you start looking for a solution outside of you, you need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am the problem. And if you cannot say that, I can't help you, okay? Now, if you can say that, if you can, if you say, you know what, I'm the problem, okay, now we can help you. Now we can roll up the sleeves and I can really, really help you. And this is what I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you that, number one, you need to develop emotional mastery. You need to stop allowing little things of life to come in your head and disrupt, disrupt your ability to be productive, number one. Okay? Number two, you need to develop what I call physical mastery. You need to have more energy. You need to have more energy than an average person. If you don't have more energy than an average person, you're an average person. So if every, if every morning you wake up and you cannot talk to anybody until you had three coffees, you're not going to become massively successful. It's going to be very hard. Okay. If every night before you go to bed, you, uh, you need to take a sedative, some sort of a medication, you're not going to be very successful. Okay. You need to master your own energy. What does that mean? That means eating good food, digesting good food, eliminating properly, right? getting rid of toxins in your body, eliminating, exercising so that you can eliminate, okay? It needs to supplement your food because the food itself usually does not have enough nutrients anymore. So you need to supplement your food. You need to exercise. You need to be flexible. You need to be strong. Now, if you're 20 years old, forget about what I just said, okay? 
You can eat whatever you want and you because you're still strong. But by the time you're 30, 35, 40 years old, for sure, you need to start looking into your physical mastery. Okay, so that's number two. Number three. Number three, you need to look into who you are. You need to understand who you are. And I'm going to tell you something. Most people are convinced they know who they are. Right? They say, this is who I am. The reality is that who they really are is this. It's completely, completely different. Right? Most people think they are an orange, but they're actually a banana. <laughs> right? And if you, if you try to live life of an orange when you were born to be a banana, nothing's going to work. Right, so you you need to discover your own strengths, your own weaknesses, and you need to be willing to play a life within your own strengths. Just because you were born in Pakistan, or in Bangladesh, or in India, or in America, or in Canada, like me, does not mean that you need to be like all the other Pakistanis or Canadians for the rest of your life. See, I'm very, very different today than the person I grew up to be. Because, see, when you're young, you have to belong. When you're five years old, six years old, seven years old, you have to belong. If you don't know, if you do not belong, your tribe is going to push you out. And if you're, if you're six years old and your tribe or your family pushes you out, how are you going to survive? You can't survive. So we have a mechanism in our brain that says, when I'm young, I have to belong. That's good. But usually around the age of 24, 25 years old, there's a new mechanism that develops in the frontal lobe of your brain right here. It's the last part of the human body to develop right here. And that frontal lobe, or sometimes the scientists call it the executive center, is an ability for you to discern, an ability for you to see who you are, an ability to to step outside of yourself and see yourself for what you are. And at that moment, you need to decide. Just because I grew up in Karachi doesn't mean I have to be like everybody else in Karachi. I could be like somebody, somebody else in Canada. Or I can think like somebody in America. And I can be like, or I can be like a, like a French person. Okay? You get to, you get at, after the age of 25, you get to sit down with yourself and understand who you really are. There is a force emanating from you. There is a natural force emanating from you. And yours is very different than mine, right? And yours is very different than your neighbors. And yours is very different than your parents, okay? So you need to recognize that. You need to understand it. You need to seek it. So you need to understand what are your strengths in life. And then you need to play a game that was designed for you. So how do we do that, right? People always say, well, Marco, how do we do that? Well, there's a lot of tools out there called psychometric analyses. There are tools that help us understand what our strengths are. Things like uh, you might have heard of Meyer, Myers-Briggs, right? Myers or there's one that called the um, strength. Personality test. 16 personality, personality test. Yes. Yeah. And then they help you understand who you are, what your strengths are. So I always tell people, if, you, if you're not making at least $100,000 a year, okay, or if your business does not supply you with a steady source of income that you can live comfortably with, you're the problem. So you need to control your emotion, you need to control your body, you need to discover what your strengths are, and you need to play your game. If you're not making $100,000 a year, it's because you're not playing your game. Yeah, You don't know what your game is. You're playing your fancies. You're playing your emotions. You need to make rational decisions and start playing your game. That's number three. Number four, if you want to become successful, you need to learn more about the world. Right? You need to understand the world that you live in. Most people don't understand the world they live in. Most people, are they live inside of a bubble. They think, oh, because, you know, this is, this is ever, I'm going to tell you how I discovered that. Okay. I, by the time I was 31 years old, I had lived and worked in five countries. I was born in Canada, French Canada. At the age of 24, 
I moved to the Bahamas where I worked for an international hotel company. At the age of 27, I moved to Guatemala, a third world country where I owned restaurants, owned and operated. I started, owned and operated two restaurants in Guatemala. I sold those restaurants. At the age of 29, I moved to Mexico. And at the age of 31, I moved to the United States of America. And what I discovered in that process is I learned about the world. I learned about myself a lot, but I also learned about the world. I learned that every, every place I lived, there were customs, there were cultures, there were habits that were acceptable, but they were very different. People say, you know what? You know, America and Canada is very similar, very different. We have similarities, but we're very different. Just like Pakistan and India, there's a lot of similarities, but there's also a lot of differences, right? Pakistan and Bangladesh, there's a lot of similarities. Pakistan and um, uh, uh, Kashmir, a lot of similarities, but there's also a lot of a lot of differences. So just can you you understand? All of these countries used to be one country. It used to be all together, but now they're all divided. People see the world differently. Like you know, Mexicans and Guatemalans, you you see them on the street. They look the same. A Mexican and a Guatemalan, they look exactly the same. They're completely different people. Just like you know, you know, a Pakistani and a, somebody in Bangladesh, they look exactly the same. They're completely different people, right? So you need to understand how the world works if you want to become successful in the world. So what does that mean? That means you need to be a student of history. You need to become a student of psychology. You need to become a student of sociology. You, you need to study social sciences so that you get to know human beings. You understand? Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, there's a lot of content and there's a lot of information. Uh, I mean, loads of information and lo uh, I can uh, access that. So uh, you t talk about entrepreneurship and you talk about business. So um, I think that uh, in third world countries in a, or in the countries like Pakistan, people do not understand what entrepreneurship is because uh, we have seen just uh, as you said that there is a um, surge in the entrepreneur market and those who have been in the 20, uh, in the list of 20, at, at 20 stage or more than that on Forbes list, they are now on the, they are leading the market because they are the entrepreneurs, they, they want to solve problems. So uh, what do you think, what is the difference between an entrepreneur and the businessman? Because people usually mix that, uh, these terms and they, they do not understand, that's why they, know, they cannot, uh, I mean, uh, they, they cannot succeed in these, uh, these things. Yeah, the difference is very simple. The difference is actually in the definition of the word entrepreneur. See, look it up, look it up. If entrepreneur is a French word, it's a French word, right? It's not an English word, it's a French word. And it means, it's from the verb entreprendre. And the verb entreprendre can roughly be translated in English into to undertake. Entreprendre means to undertake. An entrepreneur is a person who undertakes. So what do entrepreneurs undertake to do? I'll tell you, and you said it. An entrepreneur is somebody who undertakes to find solutions to the problems of the world. Yeah. A business person is a person who owns a business, right? I own a business, you're a business person. That doesn't make you special. If you want to thrive in business, you need to become an entrepreneur. It's a person who is devoted to the creation of solutions for the world. See, they say that, and then you can say, oh, that's, what, that's who I am. That's not who you are. You either are this or you're not. If you go to work every morning and you just want to make money so that you can, you can feed your kids or you can pay your rent or your mortgage on, or your bond on your house, 
If that's what motivates you, there's nothing wrong with that. But you're not an entrepreneur. You're a business person. Or you're an employee if you have a job. An entrepreneur does not go to work to pay their bills. They go to work to change the world. Yes. An entrepreneur wakes up in the middle of the night and says, oh my God, I need to take some notes because that's I need to bring this to my, my clients. My clients need this. It's going to change their world. You know? Doesn't matter if you if you own a restaurant, a hotel, if you if you sell services like me, if you're you need to be devoted to the creation of value for your clients. And I'll tell you why. It's very simple. It's very, very simple. Why is it that entrepreneurs must be devoted to the creation of solutions? Why is it that an entrepreneur must be creating value? It's very simple. Because business, business is an exchange of value for value. Right. If you do not create value, what are you going to exchange? Nothing. You understand? You need to exchange value. If you want, see, what's the difference between a restaurant who does this much every month and a restaurant who does this much every month? Right? The food is better, the service is better, the ambiance is better. Where, where are you located exactly, Barrer? Where are you located? I'm in, in Pakistan? Uh, Pakistan, Multan, the city of Multan. Oh, you're in Multan. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. I like the little sweets. I like the little uh, the little sweets from Multan. Yeah. It's very good. I like it. What do you call those yeah. things again? It's, it's called Sohan Halwa. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. I like it. Yeah. Every time I every time I, I, I meet friends from, from Multan, they bring me those little sweets. It's really good. Um, so it doesn't matter what business you're in. You need to bring more and more and more value. If you bring more value, people are going to give you more of their value. Most people don't understand that. They think, oh, I'm just going to create, I'm going to bring a product to the market or a service and I'm going to make money. No, it's not enough. People don't buy products. People don't buy services. People buy value. Right. So how do they buy value? They work really, really hard whether they have a job or whether they own a, their own business, to create value. And then they, they turn this value into money. Now they have a little bit of money. And they say, this money, I had to work really hard to create a lot of value to make this money. So that's extremely valuable to me. You know, If I have 100,000 rupees, it's very valuable to me. It's my 100,000 rupees. And you say, give me your 100,000 rupees. Well, you better give me a lot of value for that. If you don't give me a lot of value, I'm not going to pay you. My, it's one lakh, right? 100,000 rupees. You guys call it one lakh, right? One lakh. I'm not going to give you one lakh if, because it, I'm going to say I'm going to give you half, 50,000, because that's not a lot of value. But if you give me a lot of it, maybe I'll say I'll give you 1.5 lakh, because that's a lot of value, right? Same thing. Why is it that sometimes we buy a, we buy a, let me give an example. Very similar, right? Very this similar. one here, this one here, let's say I could go to the store and I can buy this one for $2. This one, $3. What's the difference? It's water. This one is from France. This one is from Fiji. What's the difference? I don't know. But why is it that this one is $3 and this one is $2? It's water. It's the same thing. But it's not the same thing. There's value. Okay? So how do we now how do we create more value? If you if you are an entrepreneur, how do we create more value? Number there's two ways. Number one, you need to create a value proposition. You need to have a very strong proposition. That means that, see, this water here, it's called um artesian water that means that it's they they actually have a an artesian well they dig up in the ground and they go get the water in the island of fiji it's called artesian water this one here it's called natural spring water that means that the water comes down from the mountains in this case it comes down it comes down from the french alps right so it doesn't have to be dug up it's a different water Okay, so 
Um, so, the, so the water itself is different, right? So you have a different proposition, right? This one says the, the proposition of value is we go in Fiji, we, we drill a hole in the ground and we get some good water. This one says we, we at the bottom of the Alps get refreshing water. It's two different value propositions, okay? So you need to have a value proposition that is valuable for your clients. Number one. Number two, you need to have a value perception. You need to create a perception of value. Now, the truth is, I can this is this is $2, this is $3. I can buy water for 50 cents. Why is it so expensive? I'll tell you. Look at the value. Look at this one right here. Right? There's a beautiful flower. It says Fiji. Oh my God, Fiji, that sounds like purity. That sounds like, wow. There's a perception of value associated with Fiji. There's a perception of value associated with the Alps. See, there's the mountains, there's the Alps. There's a perception. You feel refreshed. It's cold, refreshing water from the French Alps. There's a perception, okay? So the people who work for these two companies, they're very, very good at creating a perception of value. <clears throat> so you want to make more money you need to have a good product, a good value proposition, and you need to know how to explode the perception of that value. Does that make sense? Yeah. So uh, you talk about the value, and uh, in marketing, we uh, we uh, study a lot about uh, value, uh, how to give value, how to create value, and how to create value for brands. And uh, with that, I I, um, I can relate to the fact that um, nowadays the currency has been changing. I mean, uh, we are now moving to cryptocurrency and then Bitcoin. And the thing I can, I mean, I can imagine or um, I, I'm asking for your uh, point of view, because uh, after some time or after some decades or maybe 100 years after, we will be giving value to others and exchange and uh, we will be uh, turning around to the barter system i like the barter system because it's it's all about value i mean uh, you have one thing and i have one thing and I, I i say that i need this thing and you say okay uh, you need this thing i need this thing you, we can exchange uh, with that and in uh, in in modern days we we call it value and in old days uh, that was called as barter system so how do you say that and uh, uh, after bitcoin and all those stuff uh, is there anything that will uh, come up as a barter system or kind of anything like that that's a really good question my friend that is a very very good question because most people don't understand we still live in a barter system Business yeah. is barter. See, let me let me just explain something to you. You understand there's no line between Pakistan and Bangladesh. There's no line between Pakistan and Kashmir. There's no line between Pakistan and and um, yeah. India. All those things are made up concepts, right? Yeah. It's a made up. It's a story that we believe. Somebody created that story, said, oh, I don't know. In the case of, you know, Pakistan and, and England and uh, and, and uh, India, it's the British people mm -hmm. who decided. Oh, no, no, no. Huh? I took a pen here. Let's throw the law, law, law. And they drew a line on the map and they said, if you're, uh, if you're Urdu, we need you to live in the north if you want to do that. If you're, if you're not, maybe you should stay here, but there's a line. It's all made up. It's not true. People believe it, but it's not true. It's the same thing with uh, it's the same thing with with currencies. They're all stories, right? So we 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 create these stories and we lie to ourselves. And then we we put some politicians in place who try to create more stories and they enforce these things. But the truth is this: there's a truth in life, okay? And human beings, in order for human beings to grow, to thrive, to expand, to, to exist, in, a, in order for us to exist, 
We need to exchange. If I cannot exchange what I create, my value, with your value, we all die. Because I don't know about you, but I can't fish. Okay? Maybe I can figure it out. But if I'm fishing, I'm not going to have time to build a house for myself at the same time. And if I'm fishing and trying to build a house for myself, I'm not going to be able to raise goats so I can cheese. I can have cheese and milk. Okay? And if I'm able to do that, I'm not going to be able to raise the crops to feed my goats also at the same time. At some point, I don't have enough. There's not enough hours in a day for me to do all of these things. So we need to team up. Human beings need to team up, right? So you raise goats. You give me cheese. You give me milk. You give me goat meat. I go fish. I go fishing. I give you some fish. We take some of your fish, some of my fish, some of your milk. We buy a house. The guy builds houses. We collaborate. Scientists are saying that this concept is so important for human beings that it is actually encoded in our DNA. It's part of who we are. So bartering is part of who we are. Today they say, well, okay, hold on a second, hold on a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. If you barter this for this, you have to give the government this. You're like, what? Where do I get this? Well, you have to buy this from this guy. Oh, okay. Where do I get this? And you go to this guy. You say, I want to buy this so I can give some to government. Well, I need this. You're like, well, I don't know this. I don't have this. Okay? So it gets very complicated. So somebody, the government says, no it's worry. A, a we're going to use this to pay. This is how we're going to pay. You need this. So this is going to become the mean of exchange. We call this, we're going to call this, in this country, this is going to be called rupees. In that country, it's going to be called dollars. You're like, dude, this is really, really messed up. It's complicated, right? But people come up with stories, and they, and they want us to believe those stories. They're all made up. It's made up. What's true? What is there's only one truth here is that we need to exchange. Okay? And then if the governments start to play and mingle in our ability to exchange, the whole world collapses. That's the reality. That's okay? Reality. So I like to bring it back to the basic when I talk to my clients. I say your job is to create massive massive value so that you can exchange it for more value. That's your number one job, okay? Now, if governments will come and try to take some of that away from you, well, people will try to manipulate the market. People will try to say, if I give you one of this, I want you to give me three of these. That's okay, you can, we can deal with that. But the first thing that must happen, you need to become a producer of value. If you can't produce value, you will die. It was the same thing Last month, it was the same thing 50 years ago. It was the same thing a 1,000 years ago. It was the same thing 10,000 years ago. And I'm going to tell you something. 100 years from now, it's going to be the exact same thing. Okay? People can tell you all sorts of different stories. But if I cannot create value and exchange my value for more value, I die, you die humanity dies it's that simple my friend <laughs> that's simple so so beautifully answered uh, but the thing is uh, while we struggle for giving value while we struggle for uh, creating a massive amount of value we go to the stress i mean the stress levels become so high and sometimes people go for suicidal and sometimes they they i mean they collapse so how do you uh, face that stress and how do you beat that stress and how how can someone who is not aware of these things i mean we are talking uh, we are blessed that we have internet and we have all those things but someone who who don't have these kind of things we are talking about third of third world countries where people don't have the basic necessities and they're living under the poverty line 
but how they can i mean deal the stress i mean stress levels are uh, i feel that there, there is a basic thing and if someone uh, cope up with that they can uh, they can succeed they can succeed at any level so how do yeah. you uh, face the stress that's a very good question you're asking really good questions so i'm going to tell you <clears throat> i'm going to tell you by by telling you a fable a chinese fable and they say life is like a horse drawn carriage a horse drawn carriage in life you can be you know imagine a horse drawn carriage and the horse is the emotion it's the it's what it's what propels us forward oh my god the more excited you are the more emotional you are the more you can propel yourself forward but if you allow the horse the emotions to guide your life or to guide where the carriage goes the carriage is going to crash because the horse just wants to run so you need a driver sitting in the seat holding the reins and controlling the horse that is your rational mind you need to have a rational mind and you need to make rational decisions based on facts not based on emotion your emotions propel you forward but you need to you need to rein your emotions in with rationality you need to be rational a sorry lot of people are not rational sorry for interruption uh, how do you uh, understand how one can understand that this is my rational decision and this is my emotional decision i mean people cannot yeah. differentiate with that what is rational and what is emotional there are facts in life do you understand there are facts in life you you need to accept the facts of life let me give you an example i'm i'm 51 years old i'm 5 foot 10 i'm uh, a little bit overweight so I'm not going to play basketball for the NBA. The yeah. National Basketball Association, you understand? Because I'm not going to because I'm not the right person. This is not my fault. It's not my fault. It's this who is just a fact. You understand? Now, Michael Jordan, he's a black guy. Usually black guys are a lot more strong. They have more muscles than white people or at least they have more muscles than Chinese people usually, right? So and he's very tall he's very athletic so he had a lot he's got an unfair advantage over me playing basketball so what if i said but i want to play basketball 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 and i'm very emotional about that i can play basketball but i'm never going to win in life right now what i have my unfair advantage that michael jordan probably doesn't have is I'm 51 years old I have a lot of years of experience in business I'm a very smart person I'm a very discerning person I'm a very learned person so I can use all of that in my own advantage it's a fact it's just a fact while I may not have the physical ability to create physical prowess like Michael Jordan I can create mental prowess in business like michael jordan can't it's just a fact so being rational is being willing to look at the facts most people are not willing to look at the facts okay that's that's what it is so facts is what could be statistics could be evidence you know there's evidence there's proof those are facts okay so you have the horse emotion you have the driver the rational it's holding the horse but then you have a carriage it's a physical body if the carriage breaks down the wheel of the carriage breaks down if you do not maintain the bearings the structure the suspension the whole thing stops So you need to have a strong 
physical body, full of energy, if you want to move forward. You understand? And number four, sitting inside of the carriage is the master. You understand? Yes. And then when you are with the, what's, who's the master? The master is the part of you that is connected with everything in the universe. It's the spiritual aspect of you. It's the, it's the aspect of you, and depending on, on how religious you are or religious you're not, or your, your beliefs, we pretty much all human beings believe that there is an aspect of us that is connected with something greater. You need to allow that force to guide the driver. And you need to allow the driver to rein in the horse. When you live your life like that, there's nothing stopping you, my friend. There's nothing stopping. I hope it answers the question. Does it answer your question? Yes. Uh, it's, it's great. It's a great session. So, um, how do, so we uh, have what a do you question think here? About... Somebody, somebody, Ali wanted to know if Marco, have you ever yeah. been on a radio artist? He said, no. I mean, actually, you know what? Actually, yes. I forgot about that. When I was in high school, I used to be on the radio every week. That's a long time ago. <laughs> That's like 35 years ago. Because because your voice has uh, I mean good bass volume and I mean it's 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 good good to hear. So yeah, uh, what do you think about mind sciences? I mean uh, you may have heard about the law of attraction recently. Uh, it, it 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 got attention of, of so many people, and uh, there are other things as well uh, like uh, NLP. Like uh, there are so many things ha happening meditation. So what do you think uh, uh, these things help in uh, setting up a business or running a business or not? And, and how they help uh, a person who is running a business? It is huge. Huge. Okay. It's the foundation of everything. Now, people talk about the law of attraction. And sometimes some people have made a really bad reputation for the law of attraction. Because they say, oh, I read the book and I did not make a million dollars. Well, the reality is this. The law of attraction is not just this. It's not that. The law of attraction is an explanation of something that happens in your head. It's a phys There's a physical reaction that's happening inside of your head. It's called the reticular activating system, RAS. And the RAS is part of the limbic system in your brain. There's a clicking sound, by the way. I don't know if it's on me or if it's you. Can you hear the clicking, clicking, click, click, click? No, it's not. Uh, I think I should have. Okay. I don't know. It's, it's gone now. But there was a clicking sound. It's gone now. Okay. So... So the law of attraction is actually is something that happens inside of your brain. It's called the reticular activating system. And the reticular activating system is this, is human beings are always constantly looking out for things that are dangerous. You know, you see a tiger, you're like, whoa, right? You know, you might have heard of the term, your flight or fight system. When I see a tiger, something happens inside of my body. I have to decide, am I gonna fight? Or am I gonna flight? I'm gonna, you know? So it's called the flight. Well, that's it's all part of your reticular activating system. Well, most of the time in life, we are like this. We're like zombies, you know? We operate on the zombie mode. We're like, we don't think too much, right? If you drive your car and you always, you know, you always go to work and every morning you go to work and you turn right. You go to work, you turn right. You go to work, you turn right. On Sunday, you want to go see your friend and you get to the intersection and you're supposed to turn left. But you're so used to turning right, you know, that you get to, you're not thinking and you're like, oh, you turn, oh, you say, oh, I was supposed to go left. Because our brain, most of the time, operates in a zombie like mode. <clears throat> okay? So we have to wake it up. When we wake up the brain, let me give you an example. I just bought a brand new car. 
Okay, I just bought a brand new car. I had a, I had a smaller BMW SUV before, and this time I decided that I was going to buy a bigger BMW SUV. So I, I went to the BMW SUV dealership to change my oil, and they said, "Hey, Marco, while you would change your oil, if you want to try this car, I'm driving this car. I'm like, oh my god, this is much better. I'm higher. It's much better." So I decided to change my car. Well, ever since I bought this new SUV, sport utility vehicle, ever since I bought this car, I see it everywhere. I'm like, oh my God, it's like everybody's driving a, a BMW X5. It's everywhere. Now, was it there before? Yes, it was. But why is it that right now I seem to be attracting more BMW X5? Why? Because my brain is focused on it. So I'm, a, I'm quote unquote attracting more BMW X5. They were always there. It was always there. I just didn't see it. Understand? It's the same. That's what. That's the law of attraction. Okay. By positioning myself, by deciding, by choosing to focus on BMW X5. Now I see BMW X5s everywhere. I didn't see them before. It's almost like they didn't exist before. Now I'm attracting them. It's what I always tell my clients. Let's say you want to be, you want to be hit by lightning, right? You say, I want, I would love to, I would like to try that. I don't suggest that you do. I think it's pretty painful. But let's say you say, I would like to be hit by lightning. Well, I'm inside of my office right now. If I stay here, how long is it going to take before I get hit by lightning? It's going to take a long time. Okay. It's going to take. I'm, I'm probably never going to get hit by lightning inside of my office. But what if I say, I'm going to find, I'm going to go to um, Denver, Colorado. There's a lot of mountains. During the rainy season, when there's a lot of snowstorms, uh, snow, excuse me, there's a lot of uh, lightning storms. And I'm going to bring a rod, you know, a metal rod. I'm going to climb to the top of a mountain during a lightning storm, and I'm going to hold a rod like this. How long do you think it's going to take for me to get hit by lightning? It's going to happen pretty quickly, right? So if you want to attract, if you want to manifest, you need to, you need to put yourself in a position of being able to manifest. Everything you want in life exists already. If you can think of something, not only does it exist, Somebody has already done that. Most human beings cannot think of something that has not been done by somebody else. It's very, very hard, very hard, okay? So most human beings think only of things that have been done by somebody else. So if somebody else has done it, that means that it exists. It exists on the planet Earth. So now, if you want to have it, all you have to do to manifest it is to put yourself in the right position. It starts with adding it to your mind. Start thinking about it, start focusing on it, and then your mind will see more and more and more of it. It's almost like, it's almost like life operates in layers. There's layers of life. If I'm at this layer, I will never see what's happening at this layer. But what I could do is I could start living in my head at this layer and if i start living in my head thinking focusing on things at this level i'm going to start seeing things at this level that i was not seeing before so while here i can never get hit by the lightning here i get hit by lightning like this so i don't care what you want it doesn't matter what you want in life you need to start programming your mind to see it to seek it out, to be aware, and it's gonna happen. Does that make sense? Yes. So um, that's, I mean, a lot of information and a lot of good things uh, coming out of from your uh, out of your mouth. So um, I'm really, I have so many questions lined up, uh, but I am trying to summing up all those. So uh, what do you think about, there are three things, three terms that are very popular nowadays, learn, unlearn, and relearn. I mean, it is said that those who cannot unlearn and then relearn, they cannot survive and they cannot, um, uh, I mean, 
grow exponentially. So how can one unlearn and then relearn? I mean, if someone is uh, is of 40 years old, I mean, 50 years old like you, and he has uh, he has been introduced to, to the new programming language and he has to learn for, for some reason, he has to learn that language, but he hasn't learned uh, been before. So how can he unlearn and then relearn? It's, it's a difficult thing, but uh, what's your opinion in that, in that case? So, so here's what you need to understand, okay? Every form of learning is actually a physical connection in your brain. It's called a neural connection, okay? When you learn something, you create a new neural connection in your brain. So if you speak with a neuroscientist, they're going to explain to you that human beings, when we're very young, we create connections really quickly. I told you I just had a son this year, right? I have a baby, a nine-month-old baby. He's creating neural connections in his brain really, really quickly. Okay, it's it's like exploding right now. Okay, he's learning a lot. Okay, and it's going to keep on going like this probably until he's like ten years old. It's going to grow really fast. But starting at around the age of 20, 21 years old, we have so many connections in our head that it slows down. We don't learn that much anymore. But our ability to create new connections in the brain is about the same from the age of 20 until the age of about 75, 80, okay? So your ability to remold, reshape your brain is the same from the age of about 20 to the age of about 75, 80, okay? So you can learn just as much when you are 75, than you do when you are 80. So that's the most important thing that you need to understand, okay? That concept is called brain plasticity, okay? Your brain is constantly remolding itself. But you have to choose <clears throat> to learn. You have to want to learn. If you don't want to learn, nobody can help you. I said it at the beginning, right? If you, if you do not want to face the fact that the biggest problem in your business is you, and I said, if you don't make $100,000 a year, the biggest problem in your business is you. If you do not want to face that fact, if you do not want to confront that fact, if you do not want to learn how to overcome that, I cannot help you. Okay? Nobody, nobody can help you. Okay? So the number one thing is if you want to create new learning, you need to be willing to, to learn. That's number one. Here's the number two thing. You will not learn simply by exposing yourself to new information. Information is not enough to learn. What no, no, no human being has ever learned anything by exposing themselves to information. It's never happened and it never will happen. Information teaches zero, nothing. What we learn is when information creates a reaction, when the information, when the facts out there create a reaction inside of us, like, oh my God, whoa, you read a book and a, whoa, or you're having a conversation with somebody and a, whoa, okay? When information creates a, a rea an emotional or sometimes even a physical reaction, what happens is your neurons spark and now you create a new physical neural association you have just learned something if you read a book and you'll just read a book like this uh, 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 you're not learning anything if you're in school and you're like uh, uh, you're not learning anything okay Information, please listen to this. Information does not correlate with learning. What correlates with learning is a new physical connection in your head. And the only way that physical connection in your head will take place is if your nervous system is shaken. 
some of you right now by listening to me, you're like, holy, whoa, whoa, that makes so much sense. That makes so much sense. You just learned something. But some of you are like, what? What did he just say? Did not learn anything. You will forget it tomorrow. Okay? The only way we learn is we need to create new neuro associations. And the only way we create new neuro associations is, is when our nervous system must, must, be, must be connected. Make sense? Yes. So uh, in, uh, in, at start, you, uh, you talked about emotional uh, intelligence or uh, there is a, I mean, new thing that uh, previously people talk about uh, IQ and, they, and now they have turned into the EQ. I mean, the EQ is very important. So if someone wants to uh, build an EQ, I mean, it's, it's also called uh, that energy in motion. Emotions are energy in motions. So... I mean, there are certain things related to that. So how can one uh, create or develop an EQ in, uh, in his life? So I'm going to answer the question very quickly, okay? Here's how it works. So your EQ is, is directly related to your ability to see yourself, okay? If you cannot see who you are, okay? If you cannot see yourself, if you just operate, you know, and I'm, you're just like somebody else, you're just like another sheep amongst all the sheep. If you're just, if you do not, if you cannot step outside of yourself and say, oh, look at me, this is who I am. This is where I live. Oh, okay. If you cannot do that, your emotional quotient, your emotional intelligence, your is not going to go up. So how do we, develop an ability to see ourselves. It's called consciousness. Right? You need to have more consciousness. How do we develop more consciousness? Well, the fastest way is to have a thriving physical body. When you have a thriving physical body, okay, your consciousness is, will elevate. That's the fastest way. Because think about it, okay? Think about this. If you're sick with the cold, sitting in your bed, and you're shaking, how much consciousness do you have? Very little. But let's say, you know, you just run a marathon, and you're sitting, you just finished running the marathon. It's almost like you, you, you encompass the entire world. You can feel everything about the world. So the more physical you are, that's the first step, okay? Now, for other people, depending if you're a right brain person or a left brain person, there's certain activities that you can do that will actually boost your ability to be more aware. For me, I'm a very right brain person. So I'm a very um, creative person. So when I create, the act of creation for me is an act of, of awareness, okay? I become more and more aware. I honestly, it's almost like I'm downloading information from the, from the, from the, the, from the infinite energy of the world when I'm creating, right? So if I put myself in a position where I'm writing a book, like it's not even me writing the book anymore. It's just like, it's just, it, I, I transcend energy from the infinite knowledge of the world when I'm writing a book. That makes sense? And that gives me so much awareness. For somebody else, it might be different. But that, that is only possible if I live inside of a thriving, healthy body, right? That's why I drink a lot of this water. It's expensive water. I drink a lot of water, okay? Because, because I'm, it helps energize my body. It helps eliminate toxins from my body. Okay? I drink a lot of water. And I do a lot of different things. I take a lot of supplements and I eat good food so that I can constantly have a thriving body so that I can so that I can have a thriving mind. Make sense? So uh, at last, two quick questions. Uh, suggest some books, I mean, including your book as well, and, uh, and the message to the, to the new uh, uh, people who want to start their business, who want to be an entrepreneur. These two questions, the last. Yeah, last so, I'm, so, so I'm, working on a, I'm working on a couple of books right now. They're not out yet. Um, you know, there's so many books and 
it's it's hard for me to I've, I'm a big big reader. I always say, you know, if you want to become a leader in life, you need to be a reader. That's another way to expand your mind to see more by reading. So I love love reading. I've been a reader since my 20s. I read a lot. Um, this is a really good book. I'm reading. This is what I'm reading. This is one of the books I'm reading right now. It's called Stealing Fire. It's about developing a state of flow. It's a really good book. Um, it's hard for me to give a list of books because depending on where you are in your journey, you know, you're going to be looking for different books. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something. A book that really made a big difference for me early on in my life is something that's called uh, The Magic of Thinking Big. The Magic of Thinking Big. That's by an author named uh, Dr. David Schwartz. Very important book. The Magic of Believing. Very important book for me. Um, another book that I read early on that has a massive impact on my life is called uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Think and Grow Rich. Very important book. And for people who would like to understand, people who are already readers and who would like to understand what it means to be a human being. What does it mean to be a human being? There's an American author who wrote a book a long time ago. It's called Atlas Shrugged. Atlas Shrugged. It's a big book. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a novel, but it's probably the book that influenced my life the most. Atlas Shrugged is a story of how the world works and how human beings who participate in the world think differently than human beings who do not participate in the world and who basically instead of participating they 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 they, they suck away the powers of the world that book was a very very important book for me it's called atlas shrugged and the author's name is ayn rand a y n and her last name is rand r a n d Atlas shrugged. So I think, and again, I mean, you know, it's a one on one. When I when I speak with my clients, I I've read over a thousand books in my life. So I there's a lot of good books out there, a lot of good books out there. So the last question is your um, and suggestions for the newcomers, for the people who want to start their business, or or who want to uh, be an entrepreneur, or or anything they want to do in, the, in their life, what's your message for them? Because this content will be available for uh, for the rest of our lives and maybe we will not be there, but the, until the YouTube, it will be there. So people will get yeah. benefit from yeah. that. So I think if you're, st so first of all, you need to understand that life is about an exchange of value for value. Life is about business, okay? So, if if you you can either own your own business or you need to work for somebody else's business. Okay, there's no there's nothing else. Okay, life is business. So, if you want to start your own business, you need to understand that it's all about creating value. If you want, you need to produce massive amounts of value because that's the only thing that is being exchanged. And I always tell people who are younger. I say you have an you have an an, event, an advantage when you're younger. First of all, you have more time, so time is your biggest currency. You may not have money, but you have time, right? So you need to leverage time. You need to leverage time to make connections, to find the right partners, to find the right mentors that will actually able be able to bring you forward. See, there is one shortcut in life there's only one shortcut see even reading books is not a shortcut because reading books is just information for many people it doesn't change their life now it should change your life if you okay if you read and you implement but the only shortcut in life is mentorship if you find someone who is ahead of you on the path they can tell you what's about to come on that path. And it can save you decades of you trying to figure things on your own. That's why there was a time in history where the only way you could learn something was to become the apprentice of a mentor. 
Today, we send kids to school, universities, and we say, we're just going to give them information, information, information. And we hope that that information, that they're going to be able to use the information and translate it into an education. Many people can't. Many people go to school and they don't learn anything. But through an apprenticeship with a mentor or with, today, today there's not that many mentors, but there are a lot of coaches. If you can find a coach who is ahead of you on the path, not just somebody who came up with some theories or somebody who read a book last month and now they want to teach you about the book. No, no, no. Talking about somebody who has created results. It's probably your biggest unfair advantage as a youth who wants to start a business to find the right mentor. And then the other thing is this. When you're young, you can live on a lot less. So before you buy a house and before you get married and before you buy a car and before you have kids, if you can, push it out by a few years. Because these things are very, very expensive. When you're young, you can live with a couple of your mates in a flat together. You can live, you can eat basic food, you know, and you can take all of your small production and devote it to your growth instead of wasting it into a car, into a, a, a house, into expensive things. So what I'm trying to say is do not commit yourself financially when you're young. It's easy. You can live with your parents. You can live with your, your mates. And you can sh see when you're older, you want to have your house. You want to have your, because you have your kids, you have your wife, you have, okay. Try to delay that as long as possible. If you are an entrepreneur, okay. If you, if you're a person who wants to start a bit. Now, if you just want to have a job, you can go and, you know, go have your job and do whatever you want to do. But if you want to create value for the world, if you want to become an entrepreneur, try to delay financial commitments in your life as long as you can. That's one of the best advice I've ever received. And now that's why I tell people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, I conclude my, I mean, this whole informative session with a quote, uh, Imam Ali, uh, who was uh, one of the great leaders in, uh, almost 14 years, uh, 100 years ago. And he said that if someone taught me a single word, I will be ready to be slave of that person. So that sums up for mm -hmm. today's session wow. because mentorship is very important and uh, learning is very important. And when you uh, when you have a mentor, you you do not uh, you do not have to struggle very much. You do not have to go uh, for um, very far. You can steal the knowledge of your mentor. You can have the knowledge of your mentor. So with that quote, uh, I'll uh, uh, I'll I see you uh, in in some some other time. Uh, I will be very happy with my uh, with you talking in, in in any other session. So until the next uh, good video, good session, uh, I, I say bye to my audience. Allah Hafiz. Bye. Goodbye. Well, thank you so much for having me. Bye bye.